Well, the airport was built in 1941, uh, during the Second World War. Like a lot of airfields in Northern Ireland, I think there was nearly 30 were built during that period. It was active for a while after the war and for aviation purposes, but generally within the decline. It was acquired by the local council in the 1960s and a bit of development work. Then in the late 90s there was more work done to the airfield, uh, runway strengthened and commercial flights started to Zurich and uh, Jersey. Unfortunately they weren't very successful and uh, they were stopped. And then after the 9-11 event in America uh, the council decided to close the airfield and it was then that a business partner and myself we uh, submitted a proposal to the council and fortunately we reopened the airfield in 2004 and since then it developed as a general aviation airfield for light aircraft and helicopters. Here is our, we call a crash alarm. This is controls light across an access road across the runway. This is our main radio which you talk to aircraft, air ground radio we call it. And that's a fixed frequency, every airport's got its own frequency. Telephone, uh, this here's another radio which is our fire crew radio which is ground to ground, nothing, no, not on the air band. This instrument here gives us barometric pressure. Uh, two pressure settings, uh, the pilot in the aircraft will set his, his altimeter with these settings. If he sets this one at the top, it'll give us his, his altitude above sea level. We're 159 feet above sea level. The other setting will give him, if he sets as an altimeter, it'll give us his height above the runway surface. So we give them both the pressure settings by the radio. And this is gives our wind direction speed. At the minute it's two nine degrees at five knots. And these, these here are control uh, gates to entrance to the airport and then different phones to front door, a gate and reception area. The, the duty watch keeper is here is recording all the aircraft movements, taking phone calls. At the minute it's quiet but if it does get busy we'll put two people on duty. They go with the paperwork. We do record every aircraft movement here, keep a record. First of all, before anything sort of happens here, we do our checks. So we'll check the entirety of the fire engine, make sure it's operational, check the pumps working, make sure everything that's meant to be in here is in here, make sure our kit's ready to go for if anything happens. Following that, we'll then check our radios and do a runway inspection. So you want to make sure that maybe overnight nothing's been dropped, put in the runway, you know, make sure there's no issues, everything's clear. Once all that's done, we're then operational on the tower, so we're ready for any aircraft coming in or out. Well, the Northern Ireland Air Ambulance, um, it's based in near Lisburn. So if it's operating in Fermanagh, it's low on fuel generally. So we, we offer a fuel service here so they can continue on the mission. And they're in here on a regular basis for fuel. Without us being here, they couldn't operate in County Fermanagh. We also got, uh, we, we provide facilities for the medical flights, which is usually for organ harvesting. And we could have a time of four or five aircraft flying in here from various airports in England and Scotland with medical crews, surgical teams, who will then go to the local hospital, Southwest Acute Hospital, and um, three organs, and then fly back with them. And that is usually a, we get a few hours of warning of those flights, and usually last, the whole operation could last 12 hours or more. But we have to ring all, we're only a small team here, but everybody has to be there for these flights. Well, the first uh, VIP visitor I had was the two Clintons. They came and just uh, just as we opened. I was the first uh, celebrity visitor. But we had the Her Majesty the Queen and the late Duke of Edinburgh in 2012 for her Diamond Jubilee. She started a Northern Ireland visit here. And since then we've had um, eight royal visits. And the Prince of Wales has been in three times. So they, they know the airfield and they're glad to come. There are a lot of airfields closing and it's, they'll never come back again, so it's essential this is kept open for all, all reasons. Uh, because once it closes, it, you'll never get building. A, imagine going through the planning control for a new airport. Look at Heathrow in the third runway, how long that's taken. So, um, in fact, in fact, only for the Second World War, this, this, this airfield wouldn't be here. I think that was built in the days when planning wasn't a consideration. It was just built it, the need was there. But I'd like to think this airport will we'll keep we'll keep it going anyway.